Hi, it's Mel's Red Songbird, the Michelle Bird Song in New York City. Uh, some uh, bits and pieces of memory about uh, some uh, weird experiences I had came to me today, so I'm making this video to share it with you. When I was in Kansas, the air said to me, there are souls in the air, you know, and they talk, and they can hear as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the air said to me, get back to New York. That matches your energy. So I tried to get money from different people to get back to New York, and sure enough, the Sasangi brother, James Golden, wired me $250 for a plane ticket back to New York. James is a producer over 25 years for Russ Limbaugh. Russ Limbaugh was Horace Mann, the educator. So my shoe strap broke and um, I um, wasn't going to walk around with one shoe so I threw the shoes away. I had to wait in the airport for three days for the flight because Spirit Airlines didn't fly to New York every day but the day it flew I got on and I was sitting in my seat in coach and I said to myself I'm gonna have group sex so I started patting my foot and getting a groove you know and sex started happening spiritual air sex started happening and guys started walking it's in near where I was they didn't know exactly the source of the sex but they could feel it just like I could feel it and I was tapping my foot and getting a groove and it was amazing it felt so good so good so good and we did that <laughs> I don't know if we did it all the way to New York. I think we did. And it was great fun. I haven't done it before nor since. I, I guess Govinda Singh, Jesus Christ, put that in my mind. And uh, I did it and we had fun. Okay, so then once in New York, I said to myself, I'm going to go to Evelyn's house. Evelyn Jones was an RN friend of mine. She'd helped me before when my husband, Edwin, would go away, like to Philadelphia, and leave me and the kids singing Robin with no food. One day she and Evelyn Jones and her neighbor, Yvonne Blakeney, brought me bags of food. And she was very kind when I discovered Edwin had a baby by another woman and wanted me to uh, join the harem, create a harem. And I said no, so... She let us stay with her in our house until um, some money came and um, Shatima Bird, Gary Bird's wife at that time, said to me, you should go to India. This money is from the Master. And sure enough, there was a book called The Master Answers and it was from Charan Singh, Jesus Christ. So I went to India and uh, he put me back together. He had three guys chasing me to create some self-esteem in me and let me know I was still sexy. <laughs> and, um, you know, he was very loving to me and he answered all my questions that I had about creation and why we're alive. We're alive, he said. We live to learn to love ourselves. So that, and what is love? Love is becoming another person. Love is losing your identity. So he, he answered all these questions that the psychiatrists and the neuroscientists and all these people in the West didn't know the answers to. The mystic knew. Jesus Christ knew. So it was amazing uh, 10 days I spent there. And um, I had put my children in Montessori school and Shatima had she was their godmother. She kept she kept them while I had been in India. Okay, but let's go back to the story I wanted to tell you about when I came to New York from Kansas. I had gone to Kansas to rescue my granddaughter 
who was uh, eight months old. It didn't work out. I was physically abused, elder abuse, and um, rendered homeless, and it was a hellish experience. I just remember being in the basement where I stayed in my daughter's house, and there were gold streaks on the concrete floor. And I remember my daughter said, in heaven, they'll have streaks of gold. And I said, is this heaven? You know. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, when I got to New York, I decided to go to Evelyn's house. So I didn't have much money left after I bought the ticket. And um, I got in a taxi. It was a Muslim taxi driver. He drove me to Queens, as I asked. I wasn't sure of her address. I have forgotten her. But I knew the vicinity. And so I told him, I said, now, when we get there, you'll have to wait a few minutes because I'm going to have to get the money to pay you from, from this person, my friend. So he said, okay. So we couldn't find the place. And finally, I was feeling guilty. He was so kind and so sweet. Uh, and so I was feeling guilty because I wasn't going to be able to pay him. And I didn't want to keep running up the uh, charge. So I said, just let me out here. And give me your address so I can send you the money. And he said, no, no, that's all right. So I walked around until I found their house. And I was knocking on the door. And the neighborhood looked different. You know, guys would do rags and things like that. When I had been there before, it was a middle class uh, black neighborhood. Upper middle class, really. And uh, now it was lower class. And uh, so uh, this man came along and said, why are you banging on that door? You better get away from there. That's dangerous. New people come out and get mad with you banging on their door. So uh, I talked to James, and he said, Evelyn died about a year ago. So uh, that was a horror to me. So I was walking around Queens. I sat on a bench, and um, I saw a black car coming toward me, like an Uber van. And I was alarmed, the vibration, I'm an empath, and I can pick up the energy of things close to me. And I knew that was some danger there. So I started walking, and then another one came. And I turned the corner, and they turned the corner, and I realized these vans are following me. So then at one point, I started counting them, and it was 19 vans and a cop car. And I said, oh my God, these vans are following me. So then I got on social media, I don't know if it was Facebook or YouTube, but I started saying, and they could hear me. I started saying, these people are bullying an old lady. They're in a Uber van, and I counted 19, and they're following me, and I don't know what they want from me. So then I walked down to, uh, I think it was a Walgreens, a stump store like that, and I went in and I told them, these vans are following me, and they were Africans and some uh, people like that running the store. So I said, could you call the police? So uh, they kind of were ignoring me, but I, didn't. I waited. They said yes, and I waited. No police came. So I went outside, and I saw a police car, and I said, oh, my God, that's the same car that was with the vans, you know. They're, they're not going to help me. So then I walked, it was surreal by now, you can imagine, you know. And so I walked and I saw a building, and I snuck inside the building, and then I found a broom closet, and I went inside the broom closet and sat down and tried to rest. I was exhausted, I was so tired, and I had a bag with me, and I stayed there until, what? I think somebody discovered me, and I had to leave. 
and I walked and I'm walking up a hill and it's kind of blurry it's definitely blurry and vague but I walked up a hill and, and it was becoming morning dawn morning that's broken like the first morning blackbird has spoken like the first bird so um <coughs> somehow I got out of that mess uh, I don't know if I saw a bus because when I was running from the uber people I saw a bus but he wouldn't stop he saw me too but he wouldn't stop and then I, I saw a um car service place and I went in there and asked them if they would uh, give me a ride to somewhere, to Manhattan, I guess. And uh, when the woman found who ran the place found out I didn't have any money, she said, oh, no, no. They were very rude to me. But um, when I went up that hill, uh, everything changed and I found a bus or something. I don't remember how I got out of that mess, but that was just a strange thing that happened to me when I came back to New York from Kansas. Okay, I'll make another video when I have more stories to tell you about the weirdo life of Demis Albertson. So, uh,